This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. I've been using Anchor as my podcast host for a while now, and it's been a pleasure to use. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part, and you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Let's talk about the news. From the New York Times, Russia-Ukraine War Summary. A Russian diplomat working in Geneva has publicly resigned from his post, saying he has, quote, never been so ashamed, end quote, of his country due to its invasion of Ukraine. The first Russian soldier tried in Ukraine for war crimes has been sentenced to life in prison, though his lawyers say he plans to appeal the ruling. And Ukrainian forces are reportedly preparing for the possibility of an attack by the Belarusian military following the buildup of troops and equipment on their shared border. U.S. President Biden has signed off on a new package of military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine after a slightly slowed meander through both the House and Senate for approval. The new package includes about $9 billion for replenishing stocks of previously provided U.S. weapons, about $6 billion for the training and supply of Ukrainian forces, about $3.9 billion for intelligence and equipment support, around $8.8 billion in economic assistance for the government, about $5 billion to help with food scarcity issues, and around $900 million to support Ukrainian refugees. $67 million is being sent to the U.S. Justice Department for Russian asset seizing purposes, and about $10 million will be used for oversight purposes to make sure the other funds go where they're supposed to go and for other administrative efforts. From Axios, Southern Baptist Report finds evidence of sexual abuse cover-up. A new report says that the leadership of the U.S.'s largest Protestant Christian denomination, the Southern Baptist Convention, mishandled sexual abuse claims and that victims of such abuse were, quote, met time and time again with resistance, stonewalling, and even outright hostility, end quote. The report was funded by the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention, and it's loaded with allegations of abuse and details about how the denomination's leadership flubbed the handling of these issues from at least 2,000 onward. As has been the case with other churches, the folks at the top seem to have done all they could to silence those involved, shuffle things around so no one in positions of power would get caught, and basically ignored abuse allegations, even to the point of helping alleged abusers avoid notice in order to keep the church liability free. The current president of the SBC has said that the church, quote, will begin preparing today to take deliberate action to address these failures, end quote, and that the church's leadership would figure out how to prevent such things from happening in the future. Membership in the SBC is at its lowest point in 40 years, in part due to regular allegations of clergy sexual abuse, racism, and the church's treatment of women. And from the Associated Press, 78,000 pounds of infant formula arrives in the U.S. The first of several planned military flights carrying specialty infant formula from Europe has arrived in Indianapolis, this one hauling enough formula cargo to fill more than half a million baby bottles. There's been a significant shortage of baby formula in the U.S. in recent months, fueled by pandemic-era supply chain snarls and sparked by a shutdown at a vital infant formula manufacturing hub. That shutdown caused by reports of possible contamination. This issue has shined a spotlight on monopoly deals formula makers have made with the U.S. government that allow them to provide discounts in exchange for becoming the exclusive providers of formula for social programs in individual states. The consequence of this relationship is that if one of these regionally important suppliers experiences a slowdown or shutdown at one of their primary facilities, it can cause shortages across the whole country, which can then result in the U.S. government importing formula from other countries, something that very seldom happens in normal times because of those monopoly deals and regulations that are difficult for foreign companies to live up to.
If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.